Good morning, everyone. Uh, just give us a few seconds on our end. We're going to go ahead and get started and um, walk you through everything today. There's Monique. And uh, Monique, I'll hand it off to you. This is your show to run today. Let me know if you need anything. Uh, no, just a couple of seconds to okay. uh, just pull up my PowerPoint and let, you know, stragglers come on in. Awesome. Can everyone hear me, uh, or at least my uh, co-host? Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Welcome, fully registered team, to the X Prize Digital Learning Challenge. Uh, our second webinar will be focusing on completing the technical submission. Thank you so much for joining us. We are happy to have you. This webinar will be very brief, but we will touch upon some very important uh, details as you work towards completing your technical submission. Um, you have been muted for this webinar. You are uh, more than welcome to ask questions via the chat or Q&A function. Um, we will reserve time at the end to get to your questions. Um, and I ask that my uh, co-hosts, uh, you know, just monitor questions. Um, um, I may not be able to see it um, as I'm giving the um, presentation. If we can't answer your question today, we will follow up with you um, hopefully uh, pretty soon. I, we understand that, that you know time is of the essence, but we wanna make sure that we get the information that you need and that is accurate. Um, and if you have any questions after this webinar, feel free to email us, digitallearningxprize.org. Um, I believe you will also receive a copy of this recording um, with the closed caption incorporated. Um, uh, Hopefully uh, the turnaround time won't be too long, but we hope, hope to get that to you very soon. Our agenda for today, just gonna reintroduce ourselves just briefly so you know who's part of the core team and our roles. Um, there may be people on the call who wasn't uh, with us last month, so we'll, we're happy to reintroduce ourselves. We're gonna um, just briefly refresh, uh, refresh you on the challenge to make sure you're in the right place and understand um, what the uh, requirements and expectations are for the teams. And then we're gonna take a, a, a surface level dive into the technical submission and how you can access that on POP. And then at, at the end, we'll reserve time. So we're just gonna take a couple seconds to introduce ourselves before we hop into the refresher. So I'll go ahead and start. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Monique Golden. I am the technical lead on the XPRIZE Digital Learning Challenge. Uh, my role is to support you all and the judging components, um, particularly making sure that you are turning in technical documents like the tech submission, uh, making sure that you understand fully the competition expectations and that we execute with fidelity. Um, and on the judging end, I work with the judging panel closely to um, ensure that they are, you know, in managing the judging and scoring process, um, reviewing your technical submissions and doing that down select process. I'll hand it over to my teammate Shashi, and then we'll, we'll uh, conclude with Devin. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. My name is Shashi Rai. I'm the community lead for this particular challenge. So all your queries and uh, I'll be the point of contact for all your teams for any any queries, concerns, any information that you need. Please do reach out to me at digitallearning.xprize.org and we'll be happy to help you. Thank you. I pass it on to Devin to introduce himself. Yeah, thank you, <clears throat> Shashi. Thanks, Monique. Uh, good morning, good afternoon uh, to everyone, depending on where you are. Um, excited that you all are officially part of the competition now. Um, as everyone mentioned, um, my name is Devin Kropman. I'm the program lead. So I kind of see all the different operational aspects of this competition. Um, one quick note uh, before Monique jumps back in is Shashi mentioned it in her email last week. Um, but we will be setting up a Slack channel for everyone in the coming hours and maybe day, uh, hopefully get it out later today or tomorrow. Uh, and that'll be another uh, space where you all can ask uh, questions of us directly and we'll respond to those. And that'll increase transparency among uh, the cohort of this competition. So thank you and excited for today. Monique, it's yours. Thank you, teammates. We'll, we'll uh, move on. 
So just to give you a refresher on what this challenge is all about, um, the Digital Learning Challenge is a $1 million challenge. Um, we're focusing on identifying uh, effective learning tools and processes that improve learning outcomes. This is a uh, you know, component of technology that is incorporated into this prize. Um, that you all are, you know, you know, develop as you all are developing your technical submissions. Um, we want to know how you plan to incorporate your platforms and technology into your studies. Here is our timeline. The uh, components out in yellow are uh, completed. So as a fully registered team, your next objective is to turn in the technical submission by December 1st at 1159 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's very important that you, you, excuse me, you mark your calendars um, so that you are, are submitting uh, within uh, the P PST time zone. Once you submit your completed technical submission, it will be screened by our team and then it will be uh, complete and full, full uh, submissions will be given to our judges where they will down select the team that will move on to the pilot study. And that will wrap up in July of 2022. And then we will conclude our prize in March of 2023. The winning team will statement, as you have seen on the website in our top technical documents, such as the guidelines and rules and regulations, you will minimally demonstrate um, uh, your ability to conduct an RCT or quasi-experimental design using any meaningful and substantive educational intervention. You will systematically replicate that experiment at least five times in no more than 30 days and you will replicate the experiment within at least three distinct demographics. This is the general winning team will statement. I recognize that there are different expectations in the pilot phase, but overall, if you, as you are working and competing in this competition, this is what we anticipate the team who will be awarded the grand prize will do. There are milestone prizes a part of this competition. We like to award teams who are moving forward in the competition. And in this competition, we have a finalist prize for the up to five teams that are selected in the demonstration phase. Those teams will split the $250,000 finalist prize. And then there are runner up prizes of 250,000, which will go to the second place team. And the grand prize team will win $500,000 Obviously, they must demonstrate their solution's ability to meet or exceed the goals of the challenge, and the judging panel will uh, award that, that uh, prize to that team. Now for the technical submission. The technical submission is a form for you to provide all the detailed information about your team and your proposed solution. Um, the technical submission is broken down to three parts. The first part, we are collecting essential information, team information like name, the leader, website affiliation. If there were any changes between the team questionnaire that you submitted back in September to now, you will let us know in that component, um, in that part of the uh, technical submission, what changes have been made to your team. The second part deals with your uh, study design and your hypothesis, you know, what methodologies are you anticipating to use? Who do you want to uh, deploy your uh, study to? What populations are you interested in? What schools are you interested in? And then in part three, you're going to talk about your technology. We want to know more about the UX and the features, the functionality, how does it work? Um, you will be invited to share mock-ups of your technology or, or provide free access to the judges so that they can um, learn more about your tool hands-on. The purpose of the technical submission is for you to demonstrate that you understand the challenge. It is very important that you, um, you know, respond to the items on the technical submission um, and, and take it as if it is your proposal, because the judges only have a limited amount of time to review your submissions and they want to make sure they have as much information as possible, barring that you stick to the word limit um, such that they can understand um, your approach to this prize. Um, we want to know if your team is a fit, right? We want to make sure that you have, um, uh, you know, not only just an understanding, but that you recognize that, you know, the technology is important and the technology um, is um, incorporated into the prize in a way that is meaningful and will help us answer those questions um, or, or at least uh, reach the objectives of the prize. And then finally, for XPRIZE to provide an overview of the judging and review, uh, review and scoring. The technical submission is what we use to down select to the up to 10 teams that will move on to the pilot phase. And I'm just gonna move our photo out the way so I can see the final bullet on this slide. Okay, great. 
And as I mentioned, the winning team will statement focuses on the, uh, the, the, the team who will um, win overall, what are the expectations? But for the pilot phase, there are nuances and differences. Teams will need to carry out a minimum of a one month long pilot experiment in the education setting in the United States. So make sure in your technical submission, you are, are you know, it's clear to the judges that you have a, a study that, that is designed to last at least 30 days um, or, or a calendar month um, as you, you know, plan it out. You will conduct at least one experiment and at least one replication with at least one learner demographic for the pilot phase of the study. So make sure you are clear and you are, are you know, in describing like what that community will be um, and what environment you will like to conduct that study and, you know, how many experiments you plan to run, but at least one experiment and one. And more importantly, or, or not more importantly, uh, equally important, we have um, some guidelines around what the technology at a minimum should do. Your platform or technology will need to collect the data needed to analyze the experiment, um, which includes, could include the indicator of treatment or control, measures of the outcome variable of interest, and any other independent variables that might be useful to increase the precision of impact estimate or describe implementation. Um, so what that generally means is that we want to understand through your application how you're going to integrate or how your tool is integrated into this, uh, into your study design, but also the outcomes of the, the, the prize as well. So uh, this information is included in the rules and regulations. So make sure you're reading the technical documents um, uh, pretty closely so that you understand what is being asked of teams. Here are some important dates. Uh, as, as I've mentioned, we've kind of cleared the uh, team registration window. So um, as of October 15th, you were able to uh, view a PDF of the technical submission on POP under resources. Um, as of October 31st, that form has become live. You should be able to uh, start working if you, if you want to work directly on POP. Our recommendation is to write your answers on a separate Word document or Google Doc, and then fill in uh, the, uh, the technical submission in one setting. That is a way to make sure that if something happens, you don't lose uh, your progress uh, working directly in the form. Um, and then December 1st is our, excuse me, this December 1st is our deadline. Oh, make sure I'm able to go back. Okay, December 1st is the deadline for the technical submission and attachments. So in those spaces on the technical form where you're invited to submit uh, diagrams, mock-ups, anything that will uh, help, um, well, not anything, um, but any of the request documentation that will help the judges fully understand your technology platform or your study um, design or methodology. If you've published your work, um, feel free to include a, a, a downloadable version of your manuscript to the technical submission. Um, those uh, attachments, including the form, will be due at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So to get to the technical submission, you will log on to POP, you'll click on the challenge. Under activities, I wanna make sure I'm clear, you will click on activities and you'll see the text submission there. Um, if you encounter any issues with POP, you are welcome to email us at popsupport at xprize.org. We ask that if you were to email POP that you CC digital learning so that we are kept in the loop on um, you know, issues or, or um, uh, team uh, concerns regarding POP. So that was a nice quick uh, webinar. We don't like to keep you, uh, you know, keep you too long, just kind of give you the important information and then open up the floor for questions. So I will, um, I see we have two in the chat and two in the Q&A. Oh, just someone saying hello, hello, Hania, hello, Lamar. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Luke has a question. What counts as a study that lasts 30 days? Uh, is a study that has one hour long session on day one and then 30 days later, an hour long? Great question. So <laughs> uh, we are leaning on the teams to determine, you know, how you want to design your 30-day study. If you believe based on your hypothesis, excuse me, your hypothesis or um, your, your objectives for your study, um, that would determine um, how you want to you know, manage your time. Um, 
My interpretation is that intervention doesn't necessarily have to take place every day, if that's what you're saying, or dosage doesn't have to be every single day, but the duration of your study from start to finish, whether you're doing like a pre-post, for example, you want that to wrap up um, uh, you know, or at least last for a minimum of 30 days. The uh, time to deploy your uh, replication has to occur within 30 days after you wrapped up your pilot study. So your pilot study could be you know, three months long, within 30 days uh, after the conclusion of that pilot study, you will need to execute or, or commence your replication. Is that, is that clear? I, I can't see, but hopefully I've answered your question, but how you wanna kind of manage that duration of time is up to you, but it has to be a minimum of 30 days. And you have until July, 2022 to manage that, that window of time for the pilot phase. Did I miss anyone's questions? Is there any in the chat? There's a few questions um, that I typed answers to. So the first one was um, about um, how many teams moved, confirming the number of teams that moved to the pilot phase. We confirmed that that is up to 10. And then the follow-up to that was how long after the technical submission deadline will, will teams learn about whether or not they're proceeding? And I said that is around mid to late January, 2022. Yes, that is the goal. That is the goal. Um, Yes, and it's up to 10 teams, correct. And then we just got a new question. Can you, can your experimental design change between the pilot and demonstration phase? That is a good question. Let me get back to you. I want to say uh, that teams will, let me say that teams will have to submit. If you, if you are one of the up to 10 teams that participates in the pilot phase, you will be requested to submit a technical submission for the demonstration phase. And I believe I will confirm um, that that can, you can use that technical submission to pull, propose new ideas, you know? Um, so let me, make sure I can confirm that, don't hold me to that, but I do believe that there's an opportunity there because of course you're deploying it to more communities. Um, you know, you, you might want to, you know, utilize a, a different approach. So that would be my gut feeling, if, especially if you're doing more replications. But we can confirm and get back to you. Um, can you, uh, if that question was asked, can we figure out what team or get a recording of who that, that question came from? So I can follow up. So pilot phase includes a pilot experiment and a repli rep excuse me, replication and demonstration is five experimental re replications. Yes, at least five replications, three communities for demonstration, pilot phase, at least one experiment, at least one replication, one community. All right, we got a question about IRB. Is IRP approval necessary or is it possible to conduct the pilot study phase without approval? I'm gonna answer this first question first. Um, for, for this prize, the determination of IRB approval um, is, uh, we, we, we put that back on the teams. Um, and in most cases, if you're working in a community of students um, who are minors, the, you know, the answer is generally yes. Um, especially if you're, you're using um, some of their, their educational data and need access to school districts and things like that. So um, we recognize that that can take some time. So we want you all to start at least thinking through as you're working on your technical submission, you know, how you might wanna navigate that process and get that turned in. We do allow time for teams to turn in their IRB. Um, you know, we recognize that that can take some time. Um, Devin, do you want to chime in? Yeah, uh, no, I mean, not not on this question specifically. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> um, but yes, the, the answer is yes. We do know that depending on your methodology and what communities you want to work with, that the answer it it, it depends. Um, so that is something that we want the teams to make sure that they are accountable for and to to get the right answers on how they should proceed with that. Um, it. Uh, and then the second question, uh, what resources can we use to help us determine what approvals are necessary for our specific situation? 
Um, is that what is that one of the questions you want to chime in on or? Okay. No. Um, I would say, can you send us an email? I'd like to get a little bit more information about your question regarding the resources, um, just to get a little bit more more of an understanding. Um, Digital learning at xprize.org, if you could send us an email. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to answer Stephanie's question that came up in the Q&A, which is, do okay. individual team members need to have a profile and or account on POP to be part of the team? Um, no, I mean, I don't think this is a requirement. We're not, you know, we don't require, um, Shashi, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we don't, we're not going to require that every individual team member has an account or profile. Uh, as long as the person, the team lead or the person who's going to submit the technical submission has access and an account to do that, to do that, then that's all that matters. Yeah, the other team members can just join in as you know a team member. Yeah, only the team leads name and email ID you can keep is uh, keep it as a one point of contact in the pop, and the rest of the of your team members can join as a member. Yeah. And then the person who asked the question about experimental design changing between the pilot and demonstration phase, uh, be sure to follow up with us via email so that we can, once we confirm that answer, um, we can respond back to you directly. One thing I do want to add as kind of like a, um, you know, code of ethics for, for teams and, and participants of our prizes, if you have a question, feel free to reach out to, to the core team. We are the core team for this prize. Um, we don't encourage you reaching out to sponsors. Um, we are kind of the, uh, well, we are the you know, team that is responsible for the challenge. Um, so if there's something that we think the sponsor should know about, we are we're happy to level it up to the sponsor and, and get their feedback if necessary. Um, but we, we really wanna make sure that all communication related to this prize is coming through us directly to Shashi or um, through our digital learning email and the Slack channel that we'll, we'll have set up for you all. So there are multiple ways to reach us. Just please make sure that um, you, you, you reach out to us directly. So if there are no additional questions, uh, happy to, oh, see something jump in the chat. Can we have this gift that is currently being looped on the shared screen? Uh, you will have a copy of the PowerPoint, but um, in terms of use or use, usability of these uh, marketing uh, assets, we ask that you don't. Um, we'll, I believe we will be sending out for the teams that move on in the competition, they will get like a style guide on how to, you know, if you're, if you, if you're moving on and you want to like do a little press release, not a little, excuse me, if you want to do a press release for your team, if you are a chosen team in the pilot phase, we have recommendations, well not recommendations, we have guidelines on how you are to utilize our, um, our marketing uh, assets. So just hold off on uh, utilizing anything XPRIZE until we kind of give you the green light. I'm, I'm, very excited that you like um, our, our assets, but let's hold off until we give you um, the green light. Thank you, awesome. If there are no additional questions, we will give you some time back on your calendars um, and, and, and your, your, your clocks. So uh, any questions, again, digital learning. Oh, Frank, Frank got a hand raise. <laughs> Hi, Frank. Oh, did your hand go down? Okay, no biggie. Uh, yeah, reach out to us, digitallearningxprize.org. We are grateful that you joined us. Uh, be on the lookout for a recording of this PowerPoint. Thank you all so much. Take care. Cheers, Frank. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks, Monique. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks everyone.